okay, so this man don't hit Danny. He don't hit Danny. I said, oh my goodness, as soon as they, they would end the episode like that. Why they always wait to the end of an episode to get to the interesting parts of the show? I guess to keep you coming back for more and stuff. That's what I think. I feel like they be trying to get you to come back for more. That's why they put it at the end of the episode. Which would be understandable if the whole show was good. Because I feel like I was, it wasn't it for me. Y'all comment down below. Did y'all like today's episode? Or whenever y'all listen to this episode or whatever. But this is for Tyler Perry's Sister Season 5, Episode 7. Okay, so I have felt like something was going to go wrong way before they even got to her house. Way before they even got to her house, I was like, something ain't going to go right. Something's not going to go right or whatever. I don't know. It's just something about it. It was just like, it's something going to go wrong. Then it's the fact that Danny keep picking up strays like Andy said. Keep picking up these random dudes, but he done hit Danny. And on the preview for the next week's episode, Danny got shades on and she's telling Andy that she needs a lawyer and everything. So I guess Danny gonna, not Danny, Andy gonna have to find one of her lawyer friends because she only work with, Andy only work with divorce. I, I feel like everybody go to, to Andy, but you know, usually they know lawyers, know other lawyers. So <coughs> she could recommend somebody. But yeah, she got shades on. What did he tell her? They don't put enough information in these doggone previews at all. He told her something, and I was like, ooh, we. I guess his feelings got hurt because of what she was saying, but they don't give you the right to put your hands on nobody. But um, I thought the person was going to have to come say Danny or something because on the preview uh, for last week's episode, well, not last week's episode, but on the preview, she kept saying how it's not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted and everything. And I was like, oh, we. And then when she was in the bathroom on the phone with Andy, and she was like, call Preston. And then she like, are you afraid to be alone with him and everything? And I was like, ooh, either Preston go show up or she going to have to call Preston or something. But no, nah, it ain't, ain't go like that. But hopefully Danny will take Andy's advice and call Preston because I'm not sure what the holdup is at this point because I know the actress that played Danny spoke on it. But I was like, that ain't true because I don't understand. Maybe Danny's afraid of actually being with somebody who actually want her. I don't know what it is. I wish Preston hadn't told me he getting married. You will never tell nobody that if you really want the person. But um, next we got Andy. And I want to know, does anybody know what those papers were that she found in Gary's pocket? But Andy still ain't learning because she just won't let Gary go. So he calls her and everything. And he was asking her if she was up and she was played it off. But he ends up going over there anyways. But uh, meanwhile, while she over here just crazy over this dude, he over there making bets and stuff with Hayden and trying to take Robin down. Maybe that's what the papers were. It was about Robin or something. I don't know. He said, she said something, but I couldn't hear. Do y'all think they going to succeed in taking down Robin, or do y'all think that Robin going to outsmart him? Because on the preview, he's telling Hayden that he knows the IP address, um, you know, of the email where he sent about Paris and everything came from him. And I was like, hopefully he outsmarts them or something. I don't know. I don't want to root for him after he talk crazy to Andy like that. But at the same time... It's Gary. <laughs> you know, Gary been in the way for a long time. I don't know, though. We'll see, you know, what Robin's going to do and um, Gary as well. But there's still no sign of Sabrina or Maurice, for that matter. And it's episode seven. It's episode seven, and we still ain't seen neither one of them. They could have at least show one, but I get it. They probably got something else uh, filming other shows. I know Sabrina got a few movies out on BET Plus coming out with her Christmas movies and stuff. So, um, I don't know about Maurice, though. But uh, Calvin over there going through it with Q. He keep on booking up at Q. I was like, Calvin, just sit it out. Just sit it out. You ain't gonna do. Y'all might as well just sit him up because you ain't gonna do deadly squat. <laughs> he keep on like, you ain't like I ain't gonna do this and do that. And I was like, you ain't. You gonna try, but you know, you gonna try, but you ain't gonna succeed. But yeah, Calvin over there going through it with Q. Q doing drugs and having parties, and he don't let these folks come in and take the TV and take Calvin golf clubs and all this other extra stuff. 
And I was like, man. And Calvin be like, he be like, I'm going to call. Every time Calvin brings up the police, um, Q reminds him that he ain't he can't put him out because his name ain't on the lease either. They going to say, both of y'all got to get out. Listen, he got to take their risk or something because this man got to go. He got to go because I'm sick of him. He getting on my last nerve. I was like, how he set these folks up and he ain't here living in Maurice's spot? Man, that's crazy. But I feel like they brought it. It's Kevin brought this on himself, actually. And I didn't write that down. He brought it on himself because Maurice was telling him not to let the mains come back and all that. And he did anyway. He felt sorry for him because he cooked you some food. Now look at you getting your butt hooked and your stuff taken and all that because you wanted this man to live with y'all. It's your fault. It's your fault. But, yeah. Uh, how long do y'all think we're going to be dealing with Q until the end of this season or what? Last week, we got Karen, Aaron, Zach, Fatima, and Miss Lisa. Okay, so is her name Miss Lisa? I think, yeah, her name is Lisa. So Karen Karen finally reads uh, Zach his letter, and she basically told him that she don't want to love him anymore, but she still do. And she was telling him about, you know, all the pain he caused in the past. And I was like, yeah, like she got a right to tell him, but it's, I don't know. And hopefully, you know, Miss Lisa seems to think that this going to work and get her to stop stressing and doing all this extra stuff. We'll see, though. We'll see. She even goes as far as to tell her, and I didn't write this part down, that um maybe the reason why she is, is that she acting this way is not because of so much of Zach, but because Aaron seemed like he too good to be true, which he do. He do, but we're going to get to that part. So she finally reads him the letter and everything. And my thing is, I wish Zach would have let her know right there about what she did wrong as well. That was a perfect opportunity for both sides to tell, you know, what they went through. So they both could see, you know, the best thing is for them to separate. Because they both were toxic towards each other. Not just one side of thing, Not just one person or whatever. But he was like, no, we got to go. But Fatima spoke up. He's, he should have spoke his too. He should have spoke his too. Because if not, it's going to come back up and he's going to get a chance to tell her. He's going to have to tell her. He should have told her right then and there. But he chose not to. But um, what else we got? Um, for Team Lick here, know that all that name calling and popping up at the house and all that, that's going to have to stop. That's going to have to stop. She also let Zach know that basically his past doesn't dictate his present. That, uh, you know, because Zach kept saying, uh, you on her side and all that? And she was like, no, nah, she's trying to get him to see that uh, the work that Karen invested in in regards to him in that season, preparing him for who the man he is today and everything for her. But I feel like the man has changed. He has changed. Why, when people try to change, everybody be trying to hold them to their past. They be trying to hold them to their past, and that's what they doing is that. I said, the man has changed. Let him. Let him. That's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons why folks go back to who they was, they passed away. Because people don't never want to let them. They don't want to believe it. They be like, no, nah, you ain't changed. Now, the person don't consistently showed you that they, ain't, they don't think the same, they don't act the same, they don't move the same. But you want to hold them. They want to hold Zach to his past or whatever. But um, now, after Karen done told Aaron her truth, this man still holding on. I was like, maybe he really do love her. He's still holding on and everything. But Miss Lisa said the same, that uh, he seemed like a good man, but she thinks that he's too good to be true and that he's hiding something. And they, her and Karen both in agreement about that. And I said, I third that because, you know, he been, the way he operate, it's all, they it's always those type. They be hiding something. Maybe it ain't as what we think, or maybe it's not as bad as we think, but he definitely hides something. So maybe we finally finna get to see or learn more about this man. We in season five. Ain't it ain't we in season five? Let me see. Hold on. Not me having to check after I just got through saying we in season five. But yeah, um, we in season five and we don't know enough about these characters still. We still don't know enough about these characters. But um when him and Zag was like I don't want to say exchanging words, but when they was talking and stuff, he was like, watch it. He told Zach, watch it, because they arguing. Fatima was looking at Zach, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm confused. I was like, okay. I want to believe this man is over caring, but the way he acting towards Aaron, maybe it's because the man got him stabbed or whatever. Well, him trying to protect Karen got him stabbed and everything. Y'all think it's that, or do y'all think it's because Karen initially chose Aaron over Zach? Yeah, I think that's what it is, because uh, I think we forget that. Zach was trying to get her back, 
And she was like, no, she done moved on and everything. She wanted Aaron. Now the men let you go and you still doing the same thing. <laughs> well, she ain't doing the same thing, but you, you doing the, doing what he did. He was trying to get you back and everything. And you wasn't having it. You was talking about you moving on. Remember when they was at that hotel and stuff? And Zach <laughs> broke in. <laughs> Zach came in or whatever. And he stopped them. And I was like, yeah, the tables don't turn. The tables don't turn. But, yeah, I was like, I really hope that Zach is over Karen, as he says he is. But one thing I almost forgot is when Fatima asked about if Karen, you know, knew the date that she conceded and everything. So... Um, a, a spoiler says that Karen's supposed to think back to the date she conceived and she's supposed to know who the father is. So, do y'all think, comment down below if y'all think that it's going to actually be Zach or do y'all think it's going to be Aaron? Maybe this, if it is Aaron's, maybe she'll finally move on and let him go or whatever. But, um, I don't know. Miss Lisa seems to think it worked. But y'all let me know what y'all thought of this episode down below. Until next time, deuces.